Thank you guys so much for joining us for our Science Spectacular. We hope you guys enjoyed it, but you might be left wondering what was happening during that musical science montage. Well, we're going to go through each and every one of those demos and kind of explain to you the science behind them, starting off with our Lycopodium Fireballs. Now, a lot of our Science Spectacular has to do with fire. And when we're talking about fire, we're talking about combustion reactions. It's kind of like cooking. You need three key ingredients in the right amounts to get a fire. You need fuel, oxygen, and a heat source. And the first thing that we did during our montage was we used lycopodium powder as our fuel. Now, even though this stuff kind of just looks like sand, get a little on my hand there, that stuff is actually spores from a plant called the club moss fern, and that's the fuel source for our combustion reaction. Thing is, though, if I just poured this on the table and tried to light it, it wouldn't light because those spores sit in a big, dense pile and don't let oxygen mix in with them. That's why we have the torch and we have the squeeze bottle. Because I get our heat source going, we've got oxygen in the air, and when I squeeze out a cloud of lycopodium powder, those spores spread out and let oxygen mix in, and we get our combustion reaction. For our next demonstration, we're going to be doing a chemical reaction called a clock reaction. Now, they're called clock reactions because after a certain amount of time, we're going to be able to notice a change. We're going to combine two liquids together. We call it clock A and clock B. They may look kind of similar, but they've got different chemicals inside of them. Clock A is water with potassium iodate. Clock B is water with sodium bisulfite, sulfuric acid, and liquid starch. Now I'm gonna pour an equal amount of each of these into our cylinder. And we're gonna see what happens. Now, it might look like I've messed this demo up. However, something is happening that we can't see. Right now, iodine is combining with positive ions in our solution. But eventually, that iodine is going to run out of positive ions to bind with. And once it runs out of those ions, we're going to be able to notice a pretty interesting change. It takes about 30 seconds, so keep your eyes peeled and try not to blink. And there we go. <laughs> so that purplish black color you see happens when we have our excess iodine. It's run out of ions to bind with, and the liquid starch from clock B acts as an indicator. We're going to learn a little bit more about indicators in our next demonstration. So in the presence of iodine, liquid starch turns this purplish black color, and we get a really cool clock reaction. For this particular demonstration, we have to set up a few things before the show starts. Now, in this cup, I'm going to leave it empty. In this cup, I'm going to put a few drops of ammonia. This is a solution that is commonly used in cleaning products. And in this last cup, I'm going to add twice as much vinegar. We want a lot of vinegar in this cup. You'll see why in a minute. Now, I also have a cup full of water. In this cup, I'm going to add something called phenothaline. Phenothaline is an indicator that alerts us to the presence of a base. What we're going to do is we're going to pour some of our water into each cup. This first cup is empty, so it just looks like water. This second cup has ammonia in it. Ammonia is a base, which as we know, is something that phenothaline phenothaline will alert us to. So it changes to a bright pink color. Now what we're going to do is take these two cups and combine them back into our pouring cup. Because that ammonia is still in there, our pouring cup is now full of bright pink water. But when we add it to our final cup, that vinegar reacts with the phenothaline by turning it completely clear. Because vinegar is an acid, it completely cancels out the base that is ammonia. When we pour all of these back into our original cup, we now have both vinegar and ammonia in here. And we know that when we combine both of those, our phenothaline stays colorless, leaving behind clear water. 
let's take a look at the can crush. What we're going to do is start out with a can that's empty and have five milliliters of water in it. Now, that water is in the liquid phase. We're going to heat that up using a torch. It's going to take a little bit of time to cause that liquid to change into a gas. The energy can no longer be absorbed in the liquid, so it changes to a gas phase. You can see the steam starting to shoot out of the top right now. If we quickly cool it off, it's going to cause that energy to slow down, take up less space, and the atmosphere will crush the outside of the can inward. So let's talk about elephant toothpaste. So this is a reaction between hydrogen peroxide and sodium iodide, and then we add a little bit of dish soap for our reaction later. So we're gonna add our hydrogen peroxide to our dish soap. And even though you guys can't see it, there's already a reaction occurring. Just by adding the hydrogen peroxide to air, it already goes ahead and starts to release oxygen into the air. Um, and so to speed up this process so we can see it, and so it's really cool, we add our catalyst, sodium iodide. And a catalyst really just in any chemistry experiment is something that speeds up the process. So we're gonna add that and watch what happens. Woo! So I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's steam coming off the foam that we created and the reaction between hydrogen peroxide and sodium iodide is exothermic. And so the exothermic reaction really just means that it releases heat. We're gonna go back to lycopodium powder and look at some of the other cool qualities about it. In addition to being very flammable, lycopodium powder is also hydrophobic. That means it does not like water. So if I were to pour some of it on top of my beaker of water, it doesn't mix. All it does is sits right on top of the water. In fact, I can put my finger way down in here and it comes out nice and dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring our fun torch back. I'm going to pour some of that lycopodium water over top of our flame and we're going to see what happens. Thank you for going behind the scenes with us on our Science Spectacular. For more science fun, visit us at the Museum of Discovery.